Action. It's time for you to meet the real Agent Argyle. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can I just say, wow, uh, Argyle was uh, everything I hoped for, but also so much more than I expected. Good. That was the point. Um, you know, the whole, you know, it's meant to be a movie full of the unexpected and twists and turns and hopefully it will make you have action, some comedy, some romance, some thrills. And, uh, you know, a movie that I think we made it just to be an escape from the miserable world we're all part of right now and just switch your switch the darkness off and let the light shine. Yeah, so much fun. Um, and now you directed Daniel Craig uh, in your very first movie, Layer Cake, and he turned out to be yeah. a pretty good spy as James Bond. Yeah. Henry Cavill looks born to do it. Tell me about casting him. Yeah, if you read Ian Fleming, he is he is Bond off the page, full stop. I certainly hope you dance as well as you dress. There's only one way to find out. And when I cast him, I said, look, you've got to do me a favor. You need to play this super spy, but imagine he's 50% Roger Moore and 50% yes. Sean Connery, you know, and I can't think of anyone that I could give that direction to and they could pull it off. <laughs> and are you willing to take responsibility for bringing the flat top haircut back into style? Hey, I take, uh, yes, everyone screamed at me that I wouldn't, I couldn't bring double breasted suits back for Kingsman. So, hey, uh, that look, they came back. I'm not sure where the flat tops will, but we'll give it a go. <laughs> and now uh, Bryce Dallas Howard is the is really the heart of the film. We won't go into exactly how and why, um, but what does she bring to this project that you think no one else could? Authenticity, um, a willingness to to commit to the role, and 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 to be an everyday woman, to be a to be a beacon of strength for what a woman can and should be. Oh my God, you're Ellie freaking Conway. Author of the Argyle series, Ellie Conway. Yeah, and then of course you've got Sam Rockwell, who is just fantastic. Is it in his contract that he has to have a dance scene in every film that he does? I think what his safety net in life is, is if some people ad lib, he ad, dances and um <laughs> and i think he was so thrilled when he read the script and it had two dance sequences for him to do he was uh, which became three and then nearly became four <laughs> i had to like just beat him down with a stick um but um yeah he he loves dancing now he has this innate ability to just seem so cool while simultaneously getting the shit kicked out of him it, yeah. it, tell me about Sam as an actor and what he what he brought to this project. I think what sums Sam up is he, you know, he started in his career, his best friend was Philip Seymour Hoffman. Mm. And they said to each other, look at us. How are we gonna how are we gonna make it in the movie business? We want to get cast. So Seymour Hoffman said to him, I've got an idea. Whenever we go into an audition, if it says sit down and be quiet. We're going to stand up and we're going to shout. We're going to do opposite to what every other person does. And at least they'll notice us instead of just ignoring us. And he has that in him. So he, he I think he, he subconsciously, he, he's not forgetting that advice. So he will always find a way to do something different. God, I hate that cat. Now let's talk about the fight scenes and no no spoilers for anybody but you know the train fight scene uh the smoke grenade fight scene the ice skating scene stunning vintage wow. matthew vaughn so we can talk about yourself in the third person if you like um <laughs> what goes into creating the the perfect fight sequence what are your goals going into it and then how do you go about executing it in terms of integrating the music the choreography and just creating something that visually and stylistically we haven't seen before well that's the first thing i try to do i think with action i love action but I get bored of the same old thing again and again. And I've seen in you know, some of these movies, you can intercut three movies together with the action sequence and you wouldn't know they're three different movies. Um, they will just cut together. Uh, as, you know, it's the same punch, the same reaction, the same music. And so, so I pride myself in imagining I'm an audience member and I want to see spectacle. I want to see things I haven't seen before. So 
you know, I then sit in a room and I don't know where the ideas come from, but you know, it, you know, when I'm thinking, oh, I think we'll do a beautiful dance of smoke and ballet of death, or we'll do a, as you said, an a oil ice skating sequence, or even you know, or the train sequence was like doing action, having to shoot it twice and blinking between a cliched spy and the real spy, and and interpreting how the two people would do the same thing but in a different style. Um, so yeah, um, but I, it comes out of this desperate need. To entertain. I am such a fan. Oh yeah? What is it you do? Espionage. Would you sign my book? <laughs> Here we go. I love this book. I imagine the switching that you talked about there yeah. adds to the level of difficulty as well. Like I, the, the train scene where there's the toilet yeah. door sliding open yeah. and shut uh, and you yeah. see these two kind of visions of sort of ideal sort of spy fighting and then, you know, Sam Rockwell's version yeah. of it. Um, yeah. Tell me about how, how you go about kind of like creating that in a, in a seamless way for the audience. You have to shoot it twice. It's exhausting. You know, you literally are go, doing it twice and, um, and, and it's odd because, you know, half of what you're shooting is definitely not going to be in the film, <laughs> which is <laughs> even weirder. Um, and, and then that was hard in the edit because they were both brilliant. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh no, well, Henry, you're not going to get this moment. That's going to be Rockwell and Rockwell. So, um, and it's trying to be fair to both of them because they, they, I mean, do you know how hard it was for them that so they were in, in, you know, in the rehearsal rooms learning this fight sequence at the same time, and and you know, and Sa you know, and Sam was sort of never, you know, Henry does it all the time, you know, but Sam, this is all new to Sam, and and Henry really, really was so gracious with Sam, but Sam unbeknown to all of us he's a brilliant boxer and he's obviously a really good dancer as we know and dancing and fights choreography is quite similar in a weird way so um he was very good and what was the toughest scene to shoot from your perspective the ice skating full stop it was <laughs> very difficult we did it for real with these incredible ice skaters but i tell you what was incredible was the cameraman who was filming it skating backwards while shooting and I remember watching, you know, you, the girl was amazing, but the guy doing the same thing backwards, operating and focusing a camera, blindly skating at that speed. I'd never, I was, I was like, that man deserves a medal. <laughs> Do they give out Oscars for that? I don't know. Um, they don't but, give, they uh, should. They, one day, maybe stuntmen will get what they deserve and get an Oscar in a category. But a lot of us are trying to make that happen. Yeah, it's spectacular, that's for sure. It's, it's such a brilliant, brilliant scene. Um, and I'm sure because of scenes like that and just how fun this film is, people will be expecting and hoping and wishing for more uh, Argyle movies going into the future. What What is your hope for a potential franchise and maybe connective tissue with, the, say, the Kingsman movies? Well, this movie is all about book four and book five. So that we have a book one that's published. It's just, it's just literally been published. It's a great book one. So the next logical step, we'd shoot book one and there's a coda in the movie of one of the scenes. Then we'd like to do an Argyle 2, which is the characters in Ar that you've seen going on a very funny adventure. I think you you, you, you meet, you know, we have Flat Top Man at the beginning, at the end we have Mullet Man, um, and he goes off on an adventure. And um, and all I would say is a little clue is, if you're, you know, Argyle wears the world's best tailored Nero coat slash jacket suits, and there's only one, one tailor shop Argyle gets his suits made. Mm, very interesting indeed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now you, with Kingsman, talking about those films, you know, like you and Argyle as well now, you've, you've kind of redefined the British espionage movie and the genre, um, which in such a wonderful imaginative way. And I'm sure like everybody, you know, you grew up watching Bond movies. Who do you think could be the next 007? Do you have someone in mind that maybe no one else would think of? Well, the obvious choice would be, I mean, Ian Fleming wrote Henry Cavill. I mean, it's just, he is it. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if he, how left field he is. I think he's been spoken about. Um, but I think Aaron Taylor Johnson would make an incredible Bond. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. He was fantastic as well. And just and just finally, Matthew, uh, what did Claudia think of Chip's performance as Alfie? Uh, hey, it, 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 it's, I tell you what Claudia thought. It was a miracle that um 
I managed to be the cat handler for three months and and that the, we liked each other after three months of filming and the cat came back and everyone asked me, so it, it, you know, is Chip now a diva? I'm like, every cat in the world's a diva. He was a diva before, <laughs> he was a diva during, and he's a diva afterwards and he's a cat. Um, but he's um, he's a love, I'm a dog person, but I, you know, I've fallen in love with Chip, which is what I say through gr gritted teeth, but um, <laughs> he's a good cat. He's a good cat. He's a cool certainly cat. Is in this, certainly is in this movie, a superstar cat. Uh, Matthew, yeah. it's been a treat to talk to you. The film is an absolute cracker. All the best promoting it. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for your time.